Cloiso, Cloiso, welcome, welcome to Britain's Hidden History, or should I say, Bienvenue, because this is more like French hidden history in a way, and it ties in, because one of the things Wilson and Blackett uh, have done in this wonderful book here, Trojan War 650 BC, is show how, um, well, convincingly in my view, the Trojan War needs to be moved forward. It's, it's uh, generally thought around 1200 BC, it needs to come forward almost 600 years, and then everything seems to make sense. Now, hopefully you've seen uh, the video about uh, Griffith Ap Arthur, where it shows that his problem was trying to make 600 years of kings leap back another six, an extra 600 years, which messes everything up because he had to fill the gaps. Well, what Wilson of Blackett observed is the same thing has happened with the Franks ancestral and kings list. So here you can see it's in the book. I'm just you can have a look through there, and I'm going to read from the book and show that the sort of mess they got into in France is very similar, and it uh, backs up what Wilson Blackett had been saying about the dates being the problem. So it's page 129, start of chapter 4. The histories of the Franks are well recorded from around 400 AD onwards, and in common with all other ancient nations, they also contain the lists of their kings going back into antiquity. These kings begin with Antenor, is that Antenor, I think it must be, uh, who is said to be a grandson of Antenor of Troy. Well, there we are. This is when the Trojan War ended, so this will be him here, okay? The king list of the Franks is not often written of, <laughs> and that may well be because it does not contain a sufficient number of uh, names of kings to get back anywhere near the popular date of the Trojan War of around 1200 BC. It may also be that the long memory of the French nation is not too interested in the outdated and quite ridiculous ideas of royalty and nobility that actually caused the birth of the modern world's first great democratic republic. The first Antinor is said by Homer to have been killed in the fighting around Troy, and therefore it was his son, and later his grandson, who would have led the surviving Franks across Europe and finally into northern Germany and Belgium before they entered northern Gaul, now France. The list rambles on to arrive at Pepin of Hirschdal, Charles Martel, Pepin and Charlemagne. And we have to remember that these are names of the ancestors of Pepin of Hirschdal and not those of Clovis the Frank. Big thing to remember there. And they're not necessarily kings. It is an ancestral listing and not a king's list. Kings often had several sons, and so at some stages... These are not those of the senior royal descent. It has to be admitted that the name of Meradoc, Meradoc is surprising. Yeah, because that crops up a lot in the Welsh history, and you've got the, the tie-in with the planets and everything, Meradoc. Uh, in truth, this ancestral list does not appear to be totally reliable. But the point is that the compilers were aiming at an original start date upon which to base the time of the birth of of the nation coming out from the stricken lands of Troy. The claim is that Clodius died in AD 445, and if this is near correct, then from a Trojan War of around 650 BC to 445 BC, uh, 445 AD, is 1095 years. So that's the history they've got. The problem was, as discussed on last Sunday, <laughs> You're trying to make 1,095 years of history squeeze into 1,695 years, which is why it messes up. In this period, we have 40 ancestors, and therefore the average length of reign of each as a prince or king is 27 years. This is somewhere near the truth, as the length of reigns of kings and emperors in their hazardous uh, position in antiquity normally average around 22 to 23 years of rule. The point is, that this ancestral list of the kings of France, not the Merovingians, has a start point at Troy that is very close to 650 BC, and nowhere near the fantasy date of 1200 or even further back BC. There can be no doubt that if the ancestral list of the kings of France is anywhere near accurate, then it can only be seen as stretching back to somewhere around 600 BC. Therefore, to date the Frankish ancestral figure of Antinor Troy, back to around 1200, has been attempted, is an impossibility. 
Once again, there is the inevitable and totally avoided question of the real date of the Trojan War. Were the Romans wrong in defending the correct dates of Aeneas of Troy, the founder of Rome as a city built at around 650 BC, in the furious debates in the reign of Augustus? Was it a massive error to set aside the solid history of Rome in favour of the speculative Greek calculations of somewhere between 1334 and 1135 BC? Yes, this is not a new debate. This debate was carried out almost 2,000 years ago, where apparently there was a huge debate mainly between uh, sort of the Roman side of the events, uh, well, which has been Etruscans, I'd imagine, and the Greeks, who had done a mathematical calculation. And a lot of the noble families apparently were up in arms because, like, well, oh, my great-grandfather, he fought at Troy. What do you mean it was 600 years ago? But well, there we are. Um, the ridiculous uh, Greek dating system is the one we're still living with that causes so much trouble. So that's the kind of thing you find in that book, and there's more to come from Wilson Blackett soon. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, Hevuch. Do you know I don't know what the French word for Hevuch or pieces? Oh, well, <laughs> you know what I mean. Best wishes anyway, Hevuch. Bye.